Hey everyone, in this anatomy and physiology lesson, I wanna cover the only bone that makes up your arm, anatomically speaking, called the humerus, which also happens to be part of your appendicular skeleton. Although the word humerus comes from a Latin word that means shoulder, it's often referred to as the funny bone because humerus and humerus are homophones, meaning they have the same sound but different spelling and meaning. Now, most of you have probably heard the following phrase, everything happens for a reason. Well, when you take a look at the anatomy of the humerus, you're gonna find that all those little knobs, grooves, and depressions are there for a reason. So with that thought in mind, let's take a look at the anatomy of the humerus. And here we're looking at the humerus from the right arm, and the picture on the left is from the anterior or front view of the right arm, and on the right, we have this bone flipped around so you can see the back of it or the posterior view of the right humerus. Let's start with this ball-shaped section at the proximal end or top of the humerus, which is called the head. And it has a ball shape for a reason. It forms a ball and socket joint with the scapula or shoulder blade at the glenoid cavity, which not only allows you to move your arms in various directions, but it also allows you to throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Now immediately below the head, we have the anatomical neck of the humerus, which is a groove that provides a place for the shoulder's joint capsule to attach. Next, we have these small bumps called tubercles. And tubercles are small knobby structures on bones that allow for the attachment of muscles and ligaments. And as the name suggests, the greater tubercle of the humerus is gonna be the larger knob structure located laterally and the lesser tubercle is the smaller knob located medially. And these tubercles allow for the attachment of muscles in your back as well as a pectoralis major muscle. Now, anytime you have two heels side by side, you're going to have a valley in between them. And that's what the intertubercular groove is. It's a valley between the greater and lesser tubercles that extends down the shaft of the humerus. And it's easy to remember because the name gives it away. The prefix enter means between, and you only have two tubercles on the humerus, so this is found between those two tubercles. And this groove acts as a path for the long head of the biceps brachii. Now the part of the humerus that connects the large proximal head to that skinnier shaft below is called the surgical neck. And this is not to be confused with the anatomical neck, which we covered before, that groove immediately below the head of the humerus, Instead, the surgical neck is just that part where the tubercles morphs into that skinnier shaft. And the reason it's called surgical neck is because this is one of the most common fracture points on the humerus, and so it's probably gonna require surgical care if you ever break it. Now on the posterior side, or the back of the humerus, we have this groove that runs down at an angle, and it's called the radial groove. Now why is that radial groove there? Well, it houses the radial nerve which runs along that. The radial groove is totally groovy. Next, we have this odd triangle-shaped projection coming off the shaft of the humerus, which is called the deltoid tuberosity. And deltoid, of course, refers to the deltoid muscle, which is your shoulder muscle, and that attaches to this structure. And tuberosity is just a fancy anatomy word that refers to a large prominence coming off of a bone. Toward the distal end of the humerus's shaft, we have a ridge that forms on each side connecting to the epicondyles below. This ridge toward the midline of the body, which you can see in this posterior view of the right humerus, is called the medial supracondylar ridge. Again, let the name help you. Medial means toward the midline of the body, the prefix supra means above, and condylar means knobby. So this is the ridge toward the middle of the body that is above the knobby structure at the end of the humerus. And it allows for the attachment of muscles such as the brachialis and the triceps brachii. And on the other side, we have the lateral supracondylar ridge, pictured here in the anterior view. And lateral means at the side or toward the side of the body. And this ridge allows for the attachment of various muscles such as the brachioradialis and the triceps brachii. Next, we have the coronoid fossa, which is near the middle of the humerus toward the distal end when you look at it from the anterior view. And anytime you see that word fossa, it's talking about a depression or a small crater looking structure in the bone. Now, why is that fossa or depression there? Well, anytime you flex your forearm, the apex of the coronoid process, which is a bony prominence on the ulna of the forearm bone, 
it's going to fit into that depression of the humerus when you flex it up. So that's why that depression is there. Next, we have the radial fossa, and this is located laterally to the coronoid fossa. And guess what it does? It's going to receive the head of the radius during forearm flexion. On the posterior side of the humerus, you'll notice a huge depression called the olecranon fossa. Now, why is that there? Well, whenever you extend your forearm, that depression in the humerus is going to accommodate the olecranon process of the ulna, which is the bony projection that makes up your elbow. Now toward the distal end of the humerus, you can see how it fans out into a left and right knobby structure. And these are the epicondyles. And the prefix epi tells us that this structure is upon or over the condyles. And the condyles refer to the rounded protuberances known as the capitulum and trochlea, which I'll cover in a second. But the medial epicondyle is going to be the one toward the midline of the body because that's what medial directional term means. It means toward the midline or middle and it's just over the trochlea, and the lateral epicondyle is located toward the side of the body, which is what the lateral directional term means, just over the capitulum. And these structures allow for the attachment of various muscles of the forearm. Now let's talk about those condyles, and we'll begin with the capitulum, which is a small rounded protuberance that is located laterally on the distal end of the humerus, which articulates or forms a joint with the head of the radius bone in the forearm. The trochlea is located medially or toward the midline of the body, and it kind of looks like a trophy on its side. That's how I remember that one's the trochlea. Um, the name trochlea actually refers to a spool or a pulley, so it kind of looks like that as well. And this is the part of the humerus that articulates or forms a joint with the ulna bone of the forearm. Okay, that wraps up the anatomy of the humerus. If you check the description below, you'll find a link where you can take a free quiz to test your knowledge on this topic. In addition, we have a whole playlist of anatomy and physiology videos that you might find helpful, so you might want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.